Hey guys, Luton here. I'm back for some more Battlefield 4. We've been talking, obviously, about the most recent trailer. They've shown us some new footage. I'm not going to do a freeze frame trailer because you've seen this already. You've seen this for days. Levels done a great breakdown for this, okay? So if you want a little bit of that, go check out Levels if you haven't seen it already. I'm just dropping him an unnecessary plug there, but he did do a great job with it. So, you know, go check it out. I've just slowed this down. I don't want to do a freeze frame. We know already that this game is going to be amazing. We've seen so much about it. There's a few things we've got to talk about obviously. Um, there's a couple of other things I want to talk about in this video as well, which I'll get into once I've spoken about the specifics. Uh, there is a lot of kind of moved around recycled image and footage, so I'm just going to talk as we go. Obviously, a mixed up thing. Now, this right here is Operation Locker. It's a snowy map. We've seen part of it before. Some of it has these kind of underground segments. Some of it's above. It also has this circular prison station uh, sort of within the centre. This actually comes from, I believe, Victorian times, actually, because circular prison stations, it allows the sort of the the wardens to you know and the guards to view all prisoners at the same time of a central position it was actually I think they stopped using it because it was considered um, it didn't give the prisoners enough privacy it was considered sort of uh, against their rights or whatever you know they, they it was considered I think potentially kind of inhumane actually because it kind of gave them no privacy at any time ever and so they kind of it affected them psychologically anyway that's a complete aside that's irrelevant um, so anyway the circular prison it's obviously gonna have some really interesting gameplay the underground aspect I like the idea that you have this under overground aspect so you can kind of move below or above potentially anyway a lot of people kind of suggested about Operation Metro and how that was going to be different in Battlefield 4 some people were saying well we've seen this roof collapse maybe that roof collapse is going it allow some different routes. I think that's a good observation and something that, you know, with, you know, in touch with these other maps is something to be aware of that destruction could potentially allow potential new routes. You can see already here that there's going to be sort of external outside flanking routes as well as these internal ones. So I think that's really a great thing is that we might see less of these maps which are kind of these horrific bottlenecks where you get stuck and trapped. And we may see some more, okay, we have this really hardcore internal combat, but at the same time, it gives you tactical options. The destruction becomes actually a tactical choice rather than just unnecessary, you know, unnecessary glorification of destruction. It actually has a purpose. And I think that's an important thing to do. Now, whether that's going to be an objective purpose or whether it literally is a flanking, you know, providing you more uh, route options, that's going to be just to be seen. But it is pretty interesting. Okay, so that's Operation Locker. We've also got the kind of goal old nice style uh, radio dish map which is pretty interesting kind of jungle-esque there's a lot that you can go above there we go above and below golden eye great here's the operation locker central station you can see it's a full-on firefight perhaps some definite close call actions you actually see a guy get caught right in the middle there amongst all that destruction now here's a j8 dropping down a bomb now multiple people message me about this can i get confirmation can i get confirmation from dice about this I haven't been able to get confirmation from dice but what i will say uh it, we saw this in battlefield 2 and also so Battlefield 1943, you could drop the bombs there. Remember in both those and for 1943, you would they were basically dumb bombs. Okay, you're flying over, you release the bomb, and you hit on target. That's what that appears to be in that clip, okay? You see the, the jet flying and it drops the bomb last minute. So it's flying over, flying over, drops the bomb, and you see it release and drop down there at the last minute. That's key because it really that action that momentum there is more of a release action if it was guided it'd probably do it from higher up or whatever because then the bomb's going to fly to target so i think they're dumb bombs which means they're just kind of click release weapons that's pretty interesting means it's got some accuracy means that they will be there you are see they seem to be pretty devastatingly powerful this is obviously Golmud railway uh, which seems very vehicle heavy overall it looks a very large map it reminds you very much of kiasar railroad etc etc those kind of large vehicle heavy maps um so no doubt we're going to see more of the kind of thing you expect in those large uh, vehicle theater maps in battlefield be really good be interesting to see what else they have going on there we haven't really seen too much of that map it's going to be pretty tricky to talk about we're on the dish here of the uh, the radio dish uh, you can play above and below on the dish and again it's going to be really great to see kind of what level of destruction they actually have in place there i mean We've seen some amazing destruction overall on all the maps we've seen so far. It'd be fantastic to see what they have here. Goldmud as well. Interesting. You know, Goldmud looks very open. You can see here huge 
sort of wide open map reminds you very much of kind of the armored kill style maps and perhaps also some of those end game maps as well uh, so but whether all maps they have said that all maps are going to have like that kind of evolution aspect so what are those maps going to have if they're so wide and open what are they going to have going on there uh, so we need to see a little bit more about that and that's really the highlights for those for that trailer there I mean there isn't a great deal of detail speculation you can go into further than that it was a fairly straightforward little trailer they've mixed it together to kind of break down some of the stuff we've seen already there are little high here we are look see out on Golmer okay moving around we see a bit of a bridge highway there under the dish here on the radio you see there's ramps so you can clearly drive from below up onto the top so they've shown us some new content here which is great really really nice to see that really good to be able to sort of think about it think about what kind of experience we're going to have and I think it definitely helps to kind of broaden people's expectations about what the game is going to be like it does show some new things there it does perhaps show you know dedicated battlefield is what we're going to have of course we did see some MG emplacements again there are more MG emplacements on the Goldwood Railway that's really good because like I've said before the MG placements for me were really missing from uh, you know Battlefield 3 Bad Company 2 to those heavy MG emplacements they always had a role to play you know they were like easily destructible when you're in a heavy MG emplacement okay one RPG and you're down okay you're dead and the MG emplacement gets destroyed in the process but they were so useful you know you could use them in a multitude of situations whether you were suppressing infantry shooting at helicopters whatever you like so I'm really really pleased that they've brought that back in and that's that's a really key thing that in all these trailer videos that we've seen is those MG emplacements coming back in oh look at this how many people are gonna go for that on day one you know it <laughs> I'm so glad, okay, go on to my next bit. I'm so glad the beta is coming out in like literally whatever it is, seven days, six days, I don't know, by the time this goes out, but it's pretty soon, it's about a week. I'm super pleased that it's coming. I really, really am because it's been so hard, you know, recently trying to create content and just enjoy. I haven't really been playing Battlefield 3 that much because I just kind of have like, uh, I just, I'm, I'm ready for Battlefield 4 now, you know? I really, really am. And it's like, I don't know, like I've said on some of those other videos, uh, my, my other video I made a while back where I was talking about the d d decline kind of in the game, um, it actually sort of has been doing better than I expected. It's often funny how that happens, like you post a video and then a while later it starts to pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. And uh, it's actually people have been getting on board with that a lot. It doesn't surprise me because I think a lot of people feel the same way but I am definitely so ready for Battlefield 4 because I think people are going to come into it with that kind of fresh we're ready to play attitude rather than the kind of we're bored what the hell let's just screw around which is fun in its part but you know you don't want all your games like that and because I haven't got server set up right now Battlefield 4 guys when it comes I will have a server set up and I'll give you more details on that another time but right now I've got no servers but anyway getting back to the beta deal I'm really ready for the beta because as a producer, okay, I really, you know, you have to take it in part now as a producer and a player. And it's like, it's so agonizing not being able to kind of create the kind of content that you want to create and sort of the ideas that you have that you want to make. I mean, forget the beta as well. I'm just super happy that the game is really close as well now because it really isn't very far away. And I have so many ideas and so many things that I want to make with the game. It's going to be so fantastic to be able to sit down and be like, okay, now it's mine. I can actually get in there. I can get stuck in. I can break down all the things I want to do. I can make all the content I want to make. I can, you know, do stuff that people request. I can look at things. I can kind of go back through. I can take my time. I can analyze it. There's so much there that you want to do. Um, as I say, I've been building a list of little ideas I want to do. I have a couple of series things that I want to do. So there's loads of stuff there coming. And uh, it's just it can't come soon enough but I am very very pleased that at least the beta is coming soon because that's gonna be something there's nothing worse than just having these endless endless trailers oh yeah that's the next thing going on about Eurogamer next week now Eurogamer in London as you know is starting this week Thursday to Sunday it's a big expo in London and uh, Battle for Four is gonna be there amongst a lot of other things I'm gonna be there Thursday all day I'm gonna be there Friday for the afternoon evening part of the day so as I've said in another video if you're going along you want to meet up just give me a shout on Twitter, shout where you are, or I will shout where I'm out. I'll come and try and meet you guys. But put a pin in that. Battlefield 4, you're a gamer. Now it's going to be... Oh, by the way, there's some dams, etc. Yeah, water and some not. <laughs> The water in the dams, okay, there's going to be some, maybe one with not, and so, yeah, we'll see, like, whatever. 
Come on, what do you want me to say? Okay, there's a down, we've seen it with water. It's going to have an impact, one doesn't, yeah? I think this is the other thing about, sorry, backtrack, this is turning into one of my rambly videos now rather than my, <laughs> I started off so well on this video today and it's kind of gone off track. But no, this is exactly the point I'm making is that often with these trailer breakdowns and stuff, it's like, what do you want to say? Like, it's there, people can see it already. So, you know, <laughs> and some of these other things as well, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm going to say what I see on screen and it's kind of, <laughs> Okay, and people say like this, this is the thing, this is why I haven't had tons and tons and tons of videos for Battlefield 4, because at the end of the day I'm like, look, people see this stuff already, so like, come on, what do you want me to say? But anyway, you're a gamer, okay? With you a gamer, I, I think people need to be hedged their expectations, alright? Because let's not forget PAX. PAX did not really, Dasko didn't even play Battlefield 4 at PAX because he said it wasn't worth it. He said it was like a pre, uh, it was like an E3 build. It was like an alpha build because they didn't have a big show space. Now think about this. Gamescom was like the big show for Battlefield 4. Gamescom showed so much. They had a five day live stream at Gamescom. Now you're a gamer. I don't know what kind of size space they have, but why would they do a big show when the beta is right around the corner? Like literally the couple of days away. It makes no sense. I have a feeling that a Eurogamer, they will not have a big Battlefield 4 show in the same way they did at PAX. I wouldn't even be surprised if it wasn't the sort of full beta build at Eurogamer. Now, I may be wrong, but I'm just feeling like, why would they show, you know, if they only have a small space, they only have a certain amount, and it's to do with the player count more than anything else. And Dasko said this was the deal as well at PAX was, there was like a hugely small player count. And he was like, it was like running around a ghost town. So this is my feeling that I don't want to be super pessimistic, but I have a feeling that just out of logic at Eurogamer, it may not be the big, big battlefield show that people are expecting. So, you know, we'll wait and see, but I don't want to get myself, you know, built up for something and then get there and be super disappointed. So we're going to wait and see what they have on show there. I'm sure it'll be great to have a look at it, whatever, but all the same, got to wait and see. Anyway, not to be all done. <laughs> it's going to be a fun day out for all the family. What do you, what do you want? You know, it's going to be, <laughs> it'll be a good fun time. So I'm sure it'll be good. I'm sure I'll get to sort of mix and muddle with uh, different people. It'll be a good fun time. And then we'll be straight into the beta. So, hey, you can't go wrong there. Um, but thoughts about the beta as well, guys, if you want to drop some more thoughts there below, uh, because as you know, I've sort of mentioned about this before that, you know, the beta is not so exclusive and it's not really out for that much time. So what do we think about that? Um, you know, I, like I said before, I really don't, I think people kind of read into the whole deal with betas too much. It's kind of like, I, I only mentioned this briefly on the video the other day, but it's like, you know, a beta, for example, like Armour 3, okay, it runs on for ages and ages and there's feedback and they fix and feedback and they patch it and they fix. With what they do with Battlefield, it's not the same, but I don't feel like you, you know, it's still a beta, you know, because it's still like pre-release and people go like, oh, well, you know, they're not going to fix anything. It's just like a demo, blah, blah, blah. What's wrong with that? You know, it still gives people a chance to sort of look and feel with the game. And, you know, DICE do patch and they've also said that they're going to try and patch in a different way than they did with Battlefield 3. So it's going to be a kind of more, they're going to do smaller patches rather than these epic patches that they did before. So there's no reason, like this is, I didn't get this, like people say, oh well they won't have time to fix anything. But they do fix things, this is the point. Like we've seen it all through Battlefield 3, they do fix things and it's like, Come on, you know, they have been burning themselves, the candle at both ends, seriously, to turn this game out. You know they have, they've been killing themselves to get it out. From people that I've spoken to, and it's like, you really know they're working so hard, they're working around the clock to get this sorted out. And it's like, come on, have a little bit of, you know, seriously, you know, they're doing a hell of a lot of work already. And then on top, people expect like this perfect, perfect, perfect thing. Jesus, look at the game already, you know, seriously. So. If there's some little bits and pieces here and there and then they're going to patch it out you know who cares seriously come on like all games in the first like two three weeks or whatever you've got to take that on the chin that there's going to be some rough edges always i know people seem to think that that's like totally unacceptable and they're like no i i will pay my money and i will get a perfect game every single time jesus man seriously seriously come on just chill out you know it, 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 just take it come on the game will come out, there'll be some things that are not quite right, or blah blah blah, and then so what, you know? Every game has this, every game has it. Some way more catastrophic than others, some so bad that it makes me leave 
the game franchise forever or for a severely long time. We can talk about that another day. Um, but yeah, all the same. So I really think people need to kind of relax on this whole beta deal and just be like, Jesus, you know, it gives you a chance to play the game. What more do you want? You know, seriously. So I'm just really looking forward to being able to get hands on with the game and uh, play for, um, you know, 96 hours straight or what? <laughs> I need to make sure that I've Jesus do I even have any time off work to actually play this right there I need to, I need to make sure otherwise what the hell so yeah we need to get stuck into it but I'm really looking forward to the beta I think you can probably tell that I'm more looking forward to the actual game coming out I'm super looking forward to that if you guys have got any thoughts about specific uh, ideas for, that you want me to cover in Battle for Four, like I say, I have already got some good ideas and I've been noting down and I've been working out things that I want to do. I'm sure all producers have been doing this and I'm sure it'll be interesting to see how much repetition there is and how many people come up with actually fresh ideas and concepts. I think it's going to be pretty hard to do. I'll tell you, this is something else. This is something else with Battlefield now, which is... Um, you know, you don't want. You know, there's a lot of great people around. There's a lot of great producers around, and I think actually, on the whole, I would say that from the battlefield producers that I see, I, li I like a lot of the producers. You know, there's a lot of good quality producers who have their own take and their own spin on it, rather than some others which I seem to see. You know, other titles, other series where they kind of you know rinse and repeat quite a lot. There, there is more. I try not to do too much repetition of other people's content. That's why I haven't done so many, for example, like loadout videos and stuff before, because everybody does loadout videos. And I'm just kind of like, no, no, no. Okay, I don't want to do that. I want to stick to the stuff that I do, which is the kind of breakdown, tactical overview stuff, map analysis, etc. Because that's the kind of thing that I've always enjoyed. But as I said already, getting into Battlefield 4, I want to get into some of the more kind of weapon specific things and looking at those elements. Because like I've said, uh, there's so much more now that I think it's actually going to be more relevant than it was in Battlefield 3. And for that reason, I think I need to kind of like address it and I need to actually look at those issues. But I'll still do it in the way that I try, you know, the same style and theme that I try to continue all of the stuff that I do. Anyway guys, I think this is a pretty good place to wrap up now. I've been talking about this stuff for quite a while, so this should be a good little Sunday video for you. Um, as I say, any other thoughts and things, drop it down below. If you're going to Eurogamer, drop it down below, let me know. Uh, if you want to give me some details or whatever, just send me a message on Twitter tomorrow or this week and I'll try and hook up. I don't know exactly what kind of meeting places can be down there at Eurogamer. As I say, I'm there all day Thursday and the afternoon evening section on Friday. So anybody that's around will find a way. So uh, thanks for watching today guys, hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts about the trailer, about the new maps? What do you think about those? What do you think about how these are going to play out? Are they better? Do you like, you know, what's your favourite map so far from all the stuff that we've seen uh, right up from the beginning of Shanghai right up to now? Which are the most, you know, favourite elements that you've seen there? Drop in the comments guys, thanks for watching. Have some more Battle for 4 stuff coming very soon.